All right, so everybody has been asking for this specific episode, and today is going to be the day. I'm going to give you guys some life updates, a little bit of, uh, actually a lot, a bit of value. I'm going to be talking about specifically VetRise Academy. I know a lot of people have been asking questions about it, and I've been getting DMs about it, so I figured, why am I keeping it from you guys? Why not just talk about it? So on today's episode, it's going to be a little bit longer than normal. But I promise you, if you stick around, you are going to get a ton of value behind it. I'm going to be talking about uh, just everything that you want to know about me, about my program, about why it is that I do what I do. And uh, I think it's important. I think it's, I think it's important because stories matter, experiences matter, and they truly do shape who you are. Because if I came here, if I if I recorded this episode. And I didn't give you guys a sneak peek into who I am. How can you really get to know me? I am just this voice that maybe you follow me on social media. Maybe you don't. Maybe you know what I look like. Maybe you you watch the episodes on YouTube or on Spotify, which we're doing video episodes on Spotify now, by the way. But who am I? Like, Who is JP or who is Juan Perez? Who is this voice that I'm listening to that is so freaking attractive and seductive? I'm just kidding. But I am. <laughs> And who is this person that is giving me this information? Why should I trust him? Why should I believe what he's saying? Why does any of this matter? And I really believe that time is the most malleable. Yeah, see? That is um, an error. And I'm not going to edit it out. Because I, I want to be real. I want to be raw. And I really believe that time is the most valuable thing that we have in this world. Because we can't get it back. Once we lose it, that's, that's it. It's gone. So every second counts is something that I live by. And because I see time that way, I see your time just as valuable as mine. So because here you are right now on your drive to work at the gym, maybe you're on a hump, whatever you're doing right now, you have made the decision to spend time with me. And that means a lot to me. So I just wanna say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, Thank you. Whether you download the episodes, you follow me on socials, whatever it is, I appreciate your support. I appreciate the fact that you've been listening, you've been sharing it, you've been downloading, you subscribe to it. Thank you. And I want to be able to give you value back. So today, I'm going to start by telling you who am I? Who is Coach JP? Who is Juan Perez? So I grew up in Chicago or just outside Chicago for all my people that say, oh, well, that's not Chicago. I grew up in Cicero. And I grew up in a family that was middle class. We attended church every Sunday. I was the oldest of three. And my mom got sick. And she needed a liver transplant when I was very young. My dad used to work at a steel factory. And he would drive two hours to and from work busting his ass, making sure that not only my mom was taken care of, but that we had enough. But that also meant that my dad wasn't home a lot. And it's not that my dad was absent, that's not what I'm saying, but it also kind of taught me the idea that working hard means working hard. And it's the way that I kind of grew up with the mentality. However, my parents did eventually keep going in a different direction, which was a very entrepreneurial direction, which is one of the reasons why I have that entrepreneurial bug inside of me and why I want to start my own business. I've been wanting to start my own business since I was 13 years old. And I've had a bunch of little side businesses here and there, but nothing ever as serious as this, which is the Vet Rise Academy, which I'm going to be talking about today. But like I said, I grew up, I was the oldest of three and my mom got sick and she needed a liver transplant. And Thank God, thank goodness, whoever is your higher almighty, my mom was able to get a liver transplant. And she is still with us, thankfully, but there was a a chance that she wouldn't be here with us. And I ended up using the years after that to rebel. I got in a lot of trouble. I started hanging out with the wrong people. I got suspended and it spelled. And I went to an alternative school and I ended up being involved in gains. I ended up being involved in in drugs and I 
I got arrested for, for selling marijuana. I got in a lot of trouble. And um, finally, in my senior year of high school, a few things happened all at once. Senior year of high school, I got my life together. So I went for the alternative school. I met a girlfriend who was my girlfriend at the time, and she actually did help me in a lot of ways because it centered me to stop hanging out with the wrong people because now I was hanging out with her. My dad gave me a job helping him with, with some of the business stuff that he was doing, which, which they, they owned, and they still own their own business. And I actually ended up going back to the high school that had spelled me, and I graduated from there. Now, before all that happened, I met someone that took a interest in my future, that saw something in me, and he mentored me. Now, he didn't sit down and say, hey, I'm going to be your mentor, but that's not what mentoring is. Mentoring is honestly trying your best to give someone your best in a lot of different ways. And that can be by conversation, by being a better example, by just showing them that there's other options out there, by just giving them information, right? And this person mentored me and told me his story, and I learned that you know he also got in trouble a lot in high school. He was also involved in, in fights and in a lot of stuff. And his dad told him that he needed to either join the Marine Corps or he would go to jail or get in trouble or whatever, whatever was going on in his specific life. I can't speak to him specifically, but his story inspired me. His story inspired me and I ended up enlisting in the United States Marine Corps. And this is the first time that I actually knew what I was going to be doing in my future. I lived day by day, not because I was present, but because I had no fucking idea what was next for me. I had no idea what I was going to do after high school. I had no idea what I was going to do for college. I wasn't even thinking about college. But the Marine Corps appealed to me for a few reasons. Number one, because I wanted to do something with my life. I wanted to matter. I wanted to make a difference. And I wanted to become uh, a member of the most elite fighting force that the military had to offer. And I joined the Marine Corps and I wanted to become a scout sniper. I joined infantry. I ended up signing a seven year contract and I shipped off to boot camp in 2008. Now, I've talked about my story um, in other episodes, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that today because we would be here forever. But during my time in the Marine Corps, I was an infantryman. I was with 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines, Balls of the Corps, Lima Company, 2nd Platoon, deployed to Afghanistan, Helmand Province, 2010. And it was a very, very hard deployment. I'm sure that there are plenty of stories that we can talk about, but we're not going to spend time on that today because, um, well, there's a lot more to talk about. But all of this matters because it was very much a formative experience for me. Came back, tried out for snipers, was able to make it to the state platoon, and I went to scout sniper school in 2010 deployed on a mew went off started dating a girl from chicago i don't know why but high school and just people that i knew for some reason um i don't know i think it was just because it reminded me of home right and um started a relationship long distance and then on my last year in the marine corps i wanted to deploy again and uh she basically said that if I deployed, that we wouldn't be able to be together. And, um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. But again, I was living life day by day. I was surrounded by my best friends. I was just thinking about what does today look like? I had no idea what I was going to do after the Marine Corps. I ended up getting out of the Marine Corps on a program that I don't know if it's still around or not, but I... Received employment through a executive protection agency. Um, I worked there for about three or four months in San Francisco. Wasn't a good fit. And technically, I was still in the Marine Corps because I was part of this program where they would let you leave early as long as you had actual employment. 
And I ended up uh, getting discharged out of, out of the Marine Corps. And um, I used my orders to get out of my lease. And my dad flew out to California, San Francisco. My brother was also living in California at the time. And we just threw everything into a U-Haul. And we drove across country in March of 2013. And I came home, immediately moved in with my girlfriend at the time. Immediately stopped working out. Couldn't find a meaningful job, so I started selling sheets at a mall, at a kiosk. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew that I always wanted to become a police officer. So I started applying to every single department that had openings, and I think I ended up taking probably over 20 to possibly even 30 different police tests and applications throughout that year. At the same time, I, I met two individuals that were also a very part, very important part of my transition. And uh, these two individuals, Joe and Danny, became my team leaders, my squad leaders, my platoon sergeant, my, my company gunny, all of it, right? They became my mentors, my leadership. One of them helped me secure a really good job where I was working in a nonprofit that was definitely a launching pad for me. And it helped me because I started to develop some purpose in my life. I started to help and be part of a nonprofit that actually had a veteran volunteer program that assisted with the National Guard. And um, it was an absolutely amazing experience. I felt a little bit of purpose again, and I, I'm forever thankful for being, for being part of the Warrior to Warrior program at uh, HDA. Laura and Zach were the people that were there that gave me a chance. And then when I did really well, and Joe ended up leaving to a different nonprofit, um, they let me step up. They let me step up, and it was very meaningful for me because I started to feel like a leader again. I started to feel like I had purpose again because I, I definitely felt lost. And at the same time, Danny helped me uh, realize that I did want to continue my education. And I uh, started going to school at DePaul, became the president of the Student Veterans Union. And while all of this was happening, I wasn't working out. I wasn't really taking care of myself. I wasn't trying to find new friends or build connections. I was just hanging out with veterans and I was drinking a lot and I started smoking. And fast forward to 2014, I did eventually get hired on to a police department. And after that, everything else kind of went by the wayside, including my relationship, especially my relationship. And it's hard to say that, but all of this is just to share with you that you're not alone in what you are going through. So whether you've been out for four years, five years, whether you have four months or two months under your belt, or maybe you're still in, this is all to say that like you are going to go through these things and they are normal. They are normal, but it doesn't mean that they are not manageable. It doesn't mean that you can't handle them. There is a lot of tools out here, a lot. Going to the VA, asking for help, seeking out resources, and just understanding that you're not special. And I think that is a huge problem in the veteran community. That we get put on this pedestal by society, by ourselves, by our peers, by our family, by our friends. And we feel like we are owed something and we're not. We leave the military with a lot of tools, a lot of experience, a lot of stories, a lot of expertise in certain areas. And we forget to keep using it. Whether it's four years or 20 years, there's different experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. With, at four years, you're basically leaving something that started to give you a little bit of culture, and then it was all ripped away from you. Kind of by your own doing, you decided to get out. Nobody forced you out. Maybe you were forced out. But you come home, and you feel this kind of entitlement. You feel this ego. And when it becomes a problem is when you don't address your issues. So... This is why I was only hanging out with veterans. This is why I was drinking. This is why I felt like I was owed something. Like people needed to know that I was a veteran. People needed to know that I was a Marine. And it caused me a lot of problems. So as I started in the police department, 
I did fairly well. I excelled. I, I got、um, placed on a special team, executed a lot of search warrants, arrested a lot of a lot of bad people, did a lot of really cool stuff. Some stuff I can't talk about, just because、uh, I, again I'm still currently in law enforcement, and I will be retiring in November of this year. I called my shot, and I will be retiring after 10 years of service. At the end of this year, and I am so excited for the future. But none of this would be possible if I didn't start addressing my issues. While I was in the department, I was drinking a lot, not at work, <laughs> but every night I would go home, and all I knew was the bottle. I was smoking about a pack a day at work. I would drive home, and instead of taking the highway. I would take the streets home because I knew that there was two McDonald's on the way home, and one of them was bound to have that ice cream machine working. I gained a lot of weight. I became even more angry at the world. I became resentful towards society. I felt like I was messed up, and I had PTSD, and nobody was helping me. Nobody was addressing me, and I cheated. I stepped out of my relationship, and at this point, we had already. Got engaged. We got the dog. We we moved into the house that I bought, and we spent a shit ton of money on a wedding that I thought I had to do all of this, and I didn't. And it's my fault. It's my doing. And I hope one day I have the opportunity to apologize to her. I really do. And it's it's all my doing. And it was because I never addressed my issues. So because I never addressed my issues, I didn't realize that I had a lot of just anger built up inside me towards myself, towards the world, towards the way that things were, towards feeling like nobody understood me. And I took all of that and I kind of tunneled it and 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 went, put it deep down inside. And any time anything would ever come up. I would focus that energy on work. I would work overtime shift on overtime shift. Every single day off, I was working. When I did decide to start therapy, it was in 2017, I believe, and it was one of the hardest things I ever did <laughs> because I had to address a lot of my issues. I had to own up to the fact that. I felt a lot of guilt, and I felt a lot of anger towards some of the stuff that had happened in Afghanistan. I felt responsible for a few situations, and I had to talk about it. And、uh, talking about it made it worse at first. Eventually, things started to turn around. Therapy is not magic. Therapy will not heal you. Therapy, in my opinion, is meant to help you work through these issues. It's meant to help you detach from them, to say them out loud, to realize how certain situations that you played out in your head, where you were responsible, the more you talk about it, the more you realize or remember that you weren't. It's meant to give you that strength to realize that you need maybe maybe you do need to have some hard conversations with some people. It's meant to help you get it out there and release it from the insides, because it's it's not helping you keeping it in. It's not. Because of that, I was able to start to find myself. 2019, I ended up、uh, in another relationship. After my first marriage had abruptly ended because of me, because of me, and the second relationship, because I was also not in the best place, ended up not working out, and now I am going through a divorce because of it, with two children, Oliver and Luna. 
And it's not that this is hard to talk about. It's not that I'm embarrassed. I'm very open about this. It's just that when you look back, hindsight will always be 2020, of course, right? You can look back at the mistakes you make, the things that you did, and you realize that because you did this, this happened. And it's all my doing, all of it. It's all my fault because I hadn't healed, because I was still doing the drinking, because I was still angry at the world. I found a partner that was similar. However, I started to heal. And this is a story about me. I worked on myself. I realized that I loved my job and law enforcement will always have a place in my heart. But because of a situation that happened at work where leadership took away the thing that I had worked hardest to attain with no real rhyme or reason, I realized that I am just a number, that I don't have control over my own destiny. And I made the decision to start my business, to start taking care of myself, which I had already been doing. I had already started to lose the weight. I had already hired a coach years ago. I had already quit drinking, quit smoking because I started taking control of my life because I started reading, but I was reading with intentionality. I would read a book and I would apply whatever it is that I learned from it immediately. I would read a book and funny enough, the first book that I read that started to help me change my life is this one, Jordan B. Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. I read this book and I started applying everything immediately. I started fixing my life. I started watching the way that I talked to myself. I started treating myself as if I was someone that I was in charge of taking care of. And I started healing. I started therapy again after years of not growing. I started working on myself and I realized that the shitty situation that I found myself in, going through my divorce, dealing with deep, dark depression, feeling like a prisoner in my own house, feeling like all the money that I had lost in wrong and bad decisions and bad relationships and crashing my car as I was driving home one day and I started to fall asleep at the wheel because I was so tired because I had worked four days in a row and I could have killed myself. No one was injured, but I could have been gone from this world. All of these things that I did to myself were my doing. And honestly, that moment of realization that happened for me, it was one of the best things that could have ever happened. Because it made me realize that because I've done all these things to myself, that also means that I can start doing different things now. And if you understand the power of delayed gratification, you understand that one year from now, because of every rep that you do now, you can transform anything in your life. Whether it's your business, your body, your habits, your mindset, your finances, everything matters and everything will pay off. As well as the negative things that I used to do because I was doing all these things, because I was drinking, because I was overweight because I hated myself, because I had a lot of anger and resentment towards the world and society. It's why I ended up in the bad relationships that I was in. It's why I made a lot of bad financial decisions. It's why I was drinking all the time. It's why I couldn't maintain a honest to God friendship with most people. It's why I judged everybody. I was an asshole. 
And I really mean that. Like, I was an asshole. And this is all to share that wherever you are at right now, whatever you're going through, like, you have to own it. You have to own it. If you keep making up excuses or giving reasons or saying that life dealt you a bad hand or it's not your fault, it's because of this or that or someone else did this to you, you're giving away all the power to change that situation. You are telling yourself that you are not the reason why this happened. So therefore, you cannot be the reason why this changes. If you own all of the things that you've done in your life, whether good or bad, that means they came from you. The moment that you stop feeling like you are entitled to anything, like people owe you something, like because you did this five years ago in the service, all of a sudden people have to treat you a certain way. The moment that you can actually decide that your decisions right now, today, will change the trajectory of your life one year from now, 10 years from now. The life of your children, there is so much power in that. And that's what I realized. And I started living every single day with intentionality. Now, I'm not perfect. I've had a lot of rough days, a lot of days where I missed the mark. A lot of days where I go to bed and I question my decisions for the day. It still happens. But because I wake up every single day and I truly believe that every single day that you are alive on this planet, you are present, you can have the best day ever. I adopted that mantra after I heard my business coach say it over and over and over and over again. And I kept waiting for, for him to, to slip or to admit that he's having a bad day or just to say that he only says that just to say it. But no, he really means it. He really believes it. It's his mindset. He has set his mind to tell himself that today is going to be the best day ever. And I really believe it too. It's not about buying into something. It's about setting your mind to a belief system, a way of living life that aligns with your values. And if you don't know what your values are, you have to write them out. If you are questioning what your purpose is in life, the best way to figure it out is by writing out what is important to you. What matters to you? Where in your life are you not showing up 100%? Where in your life do you have untapped potential that you are squandering? Because we know we have it. We know that we have it. But yet we don't do anything about it. We don't do anything with it. Because we think we need permission. We think that we need situations to line up a certain way for us to be able to do anything with our lives. We think that because of this or that or someone, we can't move forward. And that doesn't sit well with me. That doesn't sit well with me at all. I don't believe that anybody, anyone should be in a situation that they don't want to be in. Now, of course, there are exceptions to everything. But when I say this, I mean that if you find yourself in a relationship that you don't want to be in, at a job that you truly don't want to be in, in a friendship, in anything you placed yourself there nobody forced you and I don't believe that anyone should stay stuck 
I think you have it in you. I think we all have it inside of us to take massive action to change our situation. If you haven't worked out in a year, all you have to do is start going for a 30 minute walk every day. Start tracking what you're eating. In my program, in the, in the academy, in the Vet Rise Academy, one of the major things that I have my clients do is track their meals, especially when they start. And typically what we find is that they will have a five to 10 pound weight loss within the first month. Because when they track their meals, they at least they eat less junk food, which has a lot of sodium, a lot of empty carbs, a lot of negative types of fats, and then they start to lose weight. They also start drinking more water. And the byproduct of drinking more water and starting to lose some of that weight, and maybe you decide to join a gym, your sleep gets better, your testosterone goes up, and you start to really see change in your life. Now, the Vet Rise Academy is a fitness program at its foundation. But what we teach, what I coach, what I preach, it's all about changing your life. Like, think about that. If you have been drinking and you work all this overtime and all you eat is junk food and you're smoking and your marriage is falling apart because you are not present at home and your kids see you and all they see is you coming home, grabbing a beer, sitting on the couch. That is the life that you are building for yourself, for your children too, because they will watch you and they will learn and they will do. But if you make the decision that you want change, you have to do something about it. You can't just say that you're interested in change. You can't just say that, well, my finances are not in order right now. Guess why they're not? When one area of your life is fucked up, every other area will likely be similar to that. One of the saddest things that I see is when people say they want to join the program and they tell me how much it's going to change your life and how committed they are to really making a difference and they want to lose the 50 pounds and they want to fix their marriage and want to quit drinking. But yet they say, oh, well, I, you know what? I can't afford it now, but on the first, I, I definitely will. More than likely, they're not serious. And it hurts me. Because I can sit there and explain to them, till I'm blue in the face, that you have been doing this for how long? How long have you been putting off change? How long have you been living life this way? And because you've been living life this way, this is why you are exactly where you are at. You are not taking ownership. And then the opposite of that. People that join the program. That they find a way to make it happen for themselves. That they renew. I've had people renew for a year. After two weeks in the program. A couple that renewed for a year. Shout out to Steven and Savannah. Two weeks into joining the program. Like, do you have any idea what that says to you individually? It's not just about, oh, I'm going to pay for a year so I save a little bit of money. No, it's about I am devoted to making sure that one year from now, I am unrecognizable. And when you do that, when you take action like that, when you pour all the alcohol in your house down the drain, when you quit cold turkey smoking, <clears throat> when you join a gym and you start going to bed on time and you start tracking your meals and you start sending those messages to voicemail or those phone calls to voicemail and you stop replying to every single message that you get on your phone and you stop staying up late when you start taking yourself seriously because nobody else is going to do it for you, 
The byproduct of that is you change the trajectory of not just your life, but the entire trajectory of your family. Your marriage may actually be resolved because of the issues that you face. The issues that you face that you need to address. And your marriage is suffering because you don't do that. Your kids, they may actually be able to spend more quality time with you because you are present and you're showing up and you have energy and you're not drained all the time. You don't need that $70,000 car in the driveway. You don't need to work all those overtime shifts just to pay for something that you think your kids will want when in reality, you being home is the most important thing. So as all this was happening and I launched my business, the Vet Res Academy, I took a deep dive into it as I was going through the hardest time of my life personally. I filed for divorce around the same time that my business was at its very best. I missed the birth of my daughter because security would not let me into the hospital as I was investing a lot of money into a business coach. Because I understood that it's not about today. It's not about the anger or the tears that I'm going to shed today because I can't be there for the birth of my daughter. It's about five years from now when I get to show my kids that running a business is possible, traveling, living life to the absolute fullest like that's what I think about I am so excited for 2025 because I know that I will have all my time to do what I want to do with it and I am so confident in myself that I believe that I am the best manager of my time I love what I do. I love coaching. I love doing this podcast. I love having the opportunity to make videos. I love the opportunity to hire people and employ people full time in the business so they can change their lives. I truly love this because I believe that if I can change the life of one person for the better, if they start taking ownership over their issues in their life and they truly make a commitment to doing something, something about it, that's all that matters. That's what matters. And it's honestly the best feeling in the world. And I'm so excited for the future. I know that one day I will be speaking on stages in front of hundreds of veterans. I know that this will become the number one veteran podcast for veterans transitioning out of the military. I know that I am going to make an impact in the world. And I truly believe this with everything that I have inside of me. Because all it takes is all you got. Like it's already inside of you. You just have to find it. You have to stop making excuses of why your life is not where you want it to be and why because of your family or because you have kids, you can't do this, or you can't do that, or you can't join the program because you don't have enough money right now or you can't start committing to the gym because you know what? Expenses in the economy, like stop, stop, stop. So uh, I, had a, I had a friend call me today, this morning. And he made me realize that um, 
that this is something special. And he made my day because he reminded me that not a lot of people are talking about these issues that we face as veterans. And I think he's right. I think that as a veteran society, I think that we have a lot of issues where we coddle ourselves and each other. And we don't hold each other or ourselves accountable. And we feel like we deserve the best job or this or that. And then we expect something and our ego gets the best of us. Now you can take those sentences and twist them and say that I don't care about veterans. But think about that for a minute. I am telling you that I believe in you so much as a veteran that I know you are capable of so much more than you are doing right now. I know that you can deal with your issues. I know that you can get an entry level job and eventually maybe even be the manager before you know it and run the store. I know that you have the experience, the expertise to humble yourself and start learning to ask for help to go to the VA to realize that the more connections you make out here with all these people who've been doing this for a lot longer than us the better off you'll be you can't hate society and hate civilians because you are part of society now you are a civilian you're not in the military anymore like you are not and you have to accept that and I think that one of the problems with a lot of veteran organizations or nonprofits out here is that they market themselves in a military style. They use a lot of military slang. And their marketing and their branding is green and camouflage and this and that. And listen, I get it. I get it. I think that it's cool. I think that it's important to have it as a piece of you, but that's what it has to be, a piece of you. It can't be your everything. It can't be your identity. And I think that's a problem that we have. In our community, it becomes our identity. We have a problem letting go. Listen, I get it. I love my 5'11 pants. I have stuff that I wear from the past, but it's not my whole being. I'm not going to get offended if someone talks bad about the military or calls me a soldier instead of a Marine. I'm not going to make a whole stink about it. You have to understand that you need to detach from your time in the military. It needs to be a chapter of your life, but it has to be that and that's it. Was it an absolutely amazing chapter? Is it part of your canon story where you actually built a lot of who you are? Yes, absolutely. But a lot of people treat it as if it is the climax and the end of their story and then they don't know what to do with themselves. And I think that is the problem. It was for me. We have to remember that we have so much more left to do. We are so capable. We can do so much with so little for so long that now that we have all these tools and resources out here and opportunities, we need to take them. We cannot feel like one day someone will come and solve all of our problems because you are the one that's supposed to do that. Take ownership over your life. Truly believe that everything that you have in your life right now, if you look at it, if you do an inventory of your life, all of it is there because of the past year, two, three, four, five years of your decision making process. And again, when you do that, you can make a decision today, right now, 
that you're going to start making different decisions. Imagine where you can be a year from now. Stop putting off change. Stop being scared of commitments. Stop waiting for someone to tell you it's okay to start. And if you haven't worked out, and if you're having problem with the drinking, and if you feel like nobody gets you, again, you are the only person that can make a change in your life. You are the only one that can decide that I'm going to start going to the gym, even if it's only three times a week. You are the one that can decide I'm going to stop pushing people away. You are the one that can decide that you are going to lower your alcohol intake and maybe even stop for a little bit. Only you. Only you. All the information of how to do anything, mostly everything in the world, is out there on the internet. We can find it. But people don't do that. People want to feel like it has to come to them. And it's not going to come to you. So, <clears throat> if for some reason you found this podcast and you started listening and it has piqued your interest, this is going to be the opportunity that you have to do something about it. If you are overweight, if you have trouble sleeping, if your mindset is all fucking jacked up right now, what are you going to do about it? If you have been interested in the VetRise Academy, the link to apply for the program is in the bio. It is a 16-week program initially. After that, we can continue on a month-to-month -month basis, or you can renew for a 24-week period or a year-long period. And I've had trouble talking about this on the podcast because I wanted to differentiate the two. But I realized that they are all in the same. Why? Well, because the point of this podcast is to help you change your life and help you truly start taking ownership over your life. I want you to understand that success in society is accessible to every single veteran. And the point of the VetRise Academy, which is my coaching program, is to help you change your life, to help you change the trajectory of your life to achieve success as a veteran in society. They are one in the same. So, if you thought about it, and maybe we've talked before, maybe we haven't, the link to apply for my academy is in the comments section below. And if for some reason you can't find it, you can find me on social media at JP, the veteran coach on TikTok, Instagram, all of them. And the link to apply for my academy is in the bio. We start you with fitness as a foundation. We create a customized program made specifically for you. It's not going to overwhelm you, but it is going to challenge you. It's going to help you start to actually take a little bit of control back. Lose some of that weight. Get some of that energy back. Now, whether you have a gym membership or, you, or we do something at home, I work very closely with you to create something specifically for you. Nutrition. We have you start tracking your meals because that is all that it takes to start. And then eventually we get your macros down and we figure out exactly what we have to do to get you to your goal weight. Every single Monday and every single Thursday, we have coaching calls where we can chat. You can ask questions. We come together as a community, the Savage Squad. And it is some of the most valuable time that you can spend in the program because that is when the mind should have, shift happens. That is when the mind shift happens. Because on that random Wednesday or that random Thursday when you're not feeling great, 
or you hear something that someone says and, and you just have something that flips for you. Something gets changed in the way that you see the world. That is when you can truly start taking this seriously. <coughs> we do bi-weekly check-ins, photos, questionnaires, weigh-ins. And the community is the strongest part of the program because there is so many Facebook groups out there with veterans that just shit talk each other and are stuck in their ways. But we make sure that the Savage Squad, the Vet Rise Academy, supports you. There has been some amazing friendships built within the community. We have had people in the community meet up with each other. We have had people in the community drive out to Chicago to meet up with us. And we, have, we, made, we had a whole big dinner with everyone that was available. And I am telling you right now, I am announcing for anyone in the Vet Rise Academy that in the summer months of 2025, we will be hosting our first in-person event. And that's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. So if you have been putting off making change, if you've been dealing with some of the stuff that we talked about, the alcohol, the losing yourself, not knowing what your purpose or your mission is anymore, feeling alienated, feeling isolated, having just such a detrimental value of who you are that you don't understand what the value is of your life. Like I dealt with all of this too. You're not alone. But I will help you. I will give you the tools. I will mentor you. I will coach you. I will show you that there are other ways. And by the way, when you join, you have access to all of our past coaching calls and the entire library. I promise you that I am committed to help you change your life. All that I need you to do is just show up. That's it. Show up to the coaching calls, show up to the check-ins, show up to the gym. And by doing the work, you will transform your life. So that is going to wrap up our day today. If you have questions, send me a message on socials or go ahead and apply for the Vet Rise Academy program in the comments below. Honestly, like you get me as your coach. And if you are enjoying these episodes and you want more of this, like what better place to get it than right here with me? I've been through a lot in life and I have a lot more left to go through. I don't pretend to know everything. I'm not going to sell you on a supplement or you have to buy this patch or you have to do this type of protein only or you have to lower yourself to 1,100 calories. That, that's all bullshit. That shit doesn't work. It is a lifestyle change. And a lifestyle change happens when you realize why it needs to happen. That is the only way that real change happens. It's not by ingesting certain types of pills for a month it's not by lowering your calories to 1100 calories it's not by throwing on a patch and just hoping that life gets better for you it's about you taking action and owning your life so do something with this information whether you join or not whether you apply or not just do something take control of your life stop blaming people for your situations and your circumstances Stop thinking that you're going to prove everybody wrong. Prove yourself right. Do it for you. Nobody else. Thank you for your time.